Amongst all the hype and success for the remake of Resident Evil 2, I'm sure there's been a burning question etched in the back of people's minds. Original versus remake, which one is better? Whose gaming cuisine will reign supreme? <laughs> okay, how do we judge this battle in our metaphorical kitchen stadium? Well, I prepared a list based on the things that I think are important considerations for both games. Character design, overall presentation, puzzles, level design, overall gameplay, character story and writing, sound, music, and voice acting. I know what a lot of you are thinking right now. Isn't this completely pointless to compare both games? Can't we just accept them as both different kinds of good? And to that I would say, you're absolutely right. But hey, let's have a little fun here and dig into what makes these games so interesting. Let's get this started. You can really tell that the character designs in the original game had a lot of thought put into them. They're so unique and recognizable. Leon's RPD uniform feels like this interesting interpretation of a police uniform, while Claire's is this very distinct red jean jacket and shorts mixed with a black undershirt and compression shorts and with the Made in Heaven design on her back. It's just a very unique and iconic design that only uses three colors, tied with memorable imagery. You can gather a lot about her personality just from her look. There's this attention to contrasting colors in both main characters' designs. Leon is blue and Claire is red. And you can immediately identify and associate which character is which by their color. Clever thinking. So when we look at the remake, their designs have been given a more realistic overhaul. They're still good here, but I feel like they've lost part of their iconicness. The colors are more desaturated, and the main characters' outfits contrast less against each other. They even toned down the Made in Heaven design to the point where most people might not even pay much attention to it at all. You can say realism this and realism that, but I don't think that realism is a good excuse for tossing away good character design. It's not like the original designs were unrealistic to begin with. I think this is down to Isao Oishi's good sense for design. Just look at any of the concept art for Resident Evil 2 or 1.5 and you can just get lost in how great it looks. Even something like the Elsa outfit comes across as quite real and is such a unique and cool design. And its colors had a purpose. The white and red was meant to contrast against Leon's black and blue. The guy had a great eye for design. How about Sherry and Ada's designs? Sherry is almost exactly the same, which is understandable. Part of me wishes they went with a more realistic outfit, like that of one of Asao Oishi's designs for Sherry. But then the other part of me understands the reason Sherry's design looks the way it does, to give off a sense of innocence and vulnerability so the player wants to protect her. This is a good example of meaning and purpose in character designs. She looks a certain way for a specific purpose, which can then be communicated visually to the player. Ada's design here in the remake is just bad. Her design in the original was fairly normal, enchanting but nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing that would attract attention. You see her design here in the remake and she's got this overcoat and sunglasses and it's just like, wow, I wonder if she has something to hide. Sure, this is a design with purpose, but it's way too obvious and simple. Did you want to shock people at all that Ada was a spy? And even if you didn't, why did you give her such a conspicuous outfit? Is she taking fashion tips from Corey Hart? She even wears these long heels instead of the flats her original design had, which is just overtly impractical. Her design is full of obvious and unoriginal femme fatale cliches, which looks even more unrealistic and ridiculous in comparison to the very realistic designs of Leon and Claire. I know they were drawing from some of Isao Oishi's sketches for Ada, but it's not like it was the only other one he drew and they adapted it in the worst way possible. I know what some of you are thinking. Who even cares about character design? It's not even important. My response would be that you are very wrong. Character design and wardrobe is very important and not given as much attention in the public eye as it deserves. You can show so much about who and why a character is just from their look. You can show change in a character instantly just from their outfits. Or you can create a lot of meaning and commentary based on how they are dressed. You can do all these things while dazzling your audience with captivating outfits. I have digressed a bit from Resident Evil, but my point is that character design and wardrobe is important and has impact and is in fact something you can screw up. The original's designs are more iconic, consistent and have a greater sense of purpose and visual flair than that of the remake. Point original. 
Despite in theory being the same game, both games handle their overall presentation in very different ways, and both to mixed results. Now the classic series used fixed camera angles, which gives it a lot of impact. The composition of each angle really helps construct the intense atmosphere of the game. Take a look here, you don't even notice Leon at first. Your eyes are immediately drawn to the horrific sight of a pack of zombies feeding. Leon is made insignificant in the camera, but the zombie threat is made large and intimidating. There is a lot of power in these camera angles. Just as an example, here's a shot of the first game and then the same location in the director's cut. Everything between these two games and locations is exactly the same. The only difference is the placement of the camera. With one camera change, you get an entirely different feeling. This is why the old school games had such power, because part of their presentation involved getting the perfect framing for the maximum impact on an audience. You just don't get the same power from the remake with its third person camera. One of the things that the original does so well is its opening. You see in vivid detail the turmoil that occurred in Raccoon City, and you spend a decent amount of time outside before getting to the police station, so that once you're there you can feel relief and that you really do not want to venture outside anymore. In the remake, you just do this quick little run and you're already at the police station, and it's so dark that you can barely make out any details. Not as effective. It might seem like a little thing, but it really helps frame the entire concept of the game. The entire story of Raccoon City is told right in front of you with just the visuals. It also helps frame why you're locked in the police station and need a way out, and how the outside is very clearly not an option. But don't think I'm trying to elevate the original's presentation over the remake. The original has issues. Something I've never been fond of is the lighting in the original. Everything is just completely overlit, which can lessen the impact of the camera compositions. Now, I don't think the remake's lighting is perfect. The Doom 3 flashlight approach is not an example of what I would consider as well-executed lighting, but it's better than having a completely overlit scene. Plus the fact when lighting is actually used in the game world, it's much better crafted than anything seen in the original. Another issue about the original was that it felt a little unrealistic in its world design at times. You had to slightly suspend your disbelief that this was a police station, this was a jail, and that this was a sewer. With the remake, you don't get that at all. The places you visit feel like something real, without having to sacrifice the ornate and gorgeous presentation of a concept like an art gallery turned into a police station. There is a lot of detail put into the police station in the remake, and every space feels worn and lived in. Okay, so which is better, original or remake? Well, it's hard to say. Take a look at this scene here. It's quite eerie and frightening to see such an ordinary thing like a bus transformed into this horrific state, and then the exact same place in the remake. It doesn't quite have the same impact on you. But take a look at this place in the original, and then the same place in the remake. There's so much more detail, and it's much more effective for the horror setting. So I'm gonna cop out here, and I promise you I'm only gonna do this once on this list, but I'm going to give both a point. Partially because both do a reasonably good job, but more so because they both have faults, and I don't feel comfortable giving one an advantage over the other. The old school Resident Evil series is full of really basic puzzles, and Resident Evil 2 might have the most basic of the lot of them. The remake has maybe three times the puzzles, and a lot more brain teasing and less tedious. Easy point to remake. The level design in the original game was never something that I ever felt was superb. The police station was full of dead ends and once you cleared out an area of enemies then it was cleared out for the entire game. In the remake, the police station is much more intricate and intertwined. You have to clear out routes to make sure they're safe. Areas will often replenish enemies naturally through the windows, which is also something you can stop by barricading them, which is really cool. I know you could sort of do this in the original, but it was much more basic and it didn't really have much of an impact. The sewer sections in both of these games are a bit eh, in my opinion but the remake is more creative and unique in its approach. I was never much of a fan of the lab in the original game. I thought it was a bit of a boring area, and I think the lab in the remake is much more interesting and fun. Level design is easily the strongest thing about the remake, and it earns its well-deserved point for it. This one is hard because the gameplay in both of these games is just so different. The original game has more action-style gameplay, while the remake is more of a horror style of game. 
This might be the most unfair of all the comparisons on this list because they're really not that comparable. This is probably going to be decided by complexity. Which game has more complex mechanics? The original isn't a slouch with its very distinct and fun weapons and interesting enemy formations. Also, the original has four different scenarios that hold a lot more story and gameplay consequence than that in the remake. But in the remake, there are countless mechanics. Different ways you can use your support weapons, your gun powders, barricading windows, characters getting new weapons on the second scenario, the knife actually being worth a shit. You need to have some skill and restraint when shooting your weapons and all the upgrades you can get for your weapons and all the inventory expansions. In the remake, a single zombie is a proper threat, a threat that you have many options to deal with it. In the original, a single zombie is a small fry and you don't have many options with how you take it on. I'm a diehard fan of how the old school Resident Evil games play. So it's twisting my insides to say this, but in comparison to the original, there is more going on in the remake. Now that's not to say that the old school games lack depth. I can think of a couple examples to the contrary, to the point where Resident Evil 2 Remake takes mechanics from these games, but this isn't Resident Evil 2 Remake versus Resident Evil 3 or Resident Evil Remake. This is Resident Evil 2 Original versus Resident Evil 2 Remake. With that criteria, I think it would be disingenuous for me to suggest that the original had superior gameplay over the remake. So point to Remake. When the remake was announced, some people were hyped for the new gameplay or all the gore. I was hyped for the changes to the story and characters. Now the original wasn't perfect, but it had a really good story in it somewhere. So having the chance to come back to either fix the original story or have a completely new one was an exciting prospect to me. So how did the story in the remake turn out? Well, it's messy. One of the things I was really hoping for was more interaction between Claire and Leon through the game. And in comparison to the original, it arguably got reduced. I don't know, I just think it's a shame and it would have been a useful and enjoyable way to develop both of their characters further. All the notes in the remake are emaciated. There's just nothing to them. Some pages are just a sentence long. Do they think people can't read? The notes combined with the visuals and cutscenes helped paint a very clear picture of all the events of Raccoon City in the original game, to the point where it had a backstory for even small details. Why weapons and ammo were in unusual places was given a purpose in the story. Why the plugs are shaped into chess pieces has a detailed backstory. And the background behind the events that led up to the game are much more thorough. The dialogue in the original is overly blunt and on the nose. The dialogue in the remake is overly blunt and on the nose. Well, it's a little more than that. Bits are better, but surprisingly more is worse. Some of the dialogue genuinely comes across as more natural and you can appreciate that. But in most of the cutscenes, characters speak in these short single sentences and it feels like as soon as cutscenes start, it's just trying to end it as fast as possible. The only cutscene that I thought was excellently handled was the ending cutscene. It felt properly paced and I was really enjoying the moment because the characters were finally given an opportunity to express a lot of their personality. The reason this scene is well paced is because it's the final cutscene and they don't have to rush past it to get back to the gameplay because there is no gameplay after this. Another issue in the remake is that the characters lack a general concern for their surroundings. They're cucumber cool and just unfazed by what they're seeing. If you go to the original, they're concerned and frightened upon entering Raccoon City. It helps demonstrate that Raccoon City is a threatening environment. Oh my god, this is so unreal. The police station's not much farther. They'll know something. Yeah, but... What if we're the only ones? What if there's no survivors? No, you're survivors. What's going on? I arrived in town, and the whole place went Great. insane! The radio's out! You're a cop, right? Yeah, first day on the job. Great, huh? Don't come any closer! <laughs> what the hell is up with you? Uh, hello? Look, I'm sorry I bothered you, okay? Just don't come any closer. Are you listening? Ha! Ha! 
are you doing? That helicopter just came out yeah. of nowhere. I'm in one piece. I'm guessing you don't have a key in one of those fancy pockets? Uh, unfortunately, no. Mm. But how are you doing? You know, just surviving. <sighs> That's good. It's good to see you're still among the living. It looks like we're not gonna find your brother here after all. There's no reason for us to stay any longer than necessary. Let's split up, look for any survivors, and get out of here. Looks like we're walking from here. More like running. Yeah, good call. If you're chill with everything going on, then the audience is going to be chill too. Isn't this a horror game where lots of bad stuff is happening? Shouldn't you be scared and vulnerable so we're scared and vulnerable? One of the big issues with the original game is that we never really learnt much about who our main characters were. Now this has been changed in the remake, but to some mixed results. Claire has more moments where she shows off her personality. Her search for Chris is emphasized more, and she has some shocker parts where we actually learn more about her as a person. These are all good changes, since I felt all those things were lacking in the original. Her scenes with Sherry come through as a genuine developing relationship and feel quite natural. However, neither Claire or Leon for that matter have the true amount of characterization that they needed in the original. Slightly thinly more characterization than the original, but you're still left hungry for more information about these characters. In the remake, Leon comes across like he has a moral code. There are good guys and bad guys in his eyes and since he's a cop, he's going to uphold the law. But it's handled in such a basic way where he comes across as almost childishly naive of circumstances and other people. It comes across very cartoonish and unrealistic and takes me right out of the immersion of the game because he's written like he isn't a person. While it's true Leon didn't have much of anything going on character wise in the original, all his actions and the things he said made sense. I'll take concerned guy over the jumbled unrealistic character over here. Chief Irons is now better integrated into Claire's plot by being more of a villain and giving a purpose for Sherry's separation from Claire, but he's more generic evil guy now. In the original, before you met him, you learnt a lot about who he was and how other people viewed him. So when you met him, it added this layer of tension. You knew he was a bad guy and he came across as really strange, but he wasn't outwardly aggressive at first. Here he is just hostile immediately and constantly. Lacks some of the depth his original iteration had. Plus his death scene is way less epic in the remake. How Annette is handled in this game is just weird. When you meet her for the first time as Claire or Leon, she acts like the dumb scientist stereotype where she's totally absorbed in her science and she doesn't pay attention to the world around her. Hmm, yes, I see. Judging by the shape of the pupils, I can see the subject is showing signs of. The Annette in the original game was a fairly simple character. She was a woman who was a paranoid emotional wreck, which was understandable given all the attacks and subterfuge. The Annette in the remake sort of has that, but it's combined with the cartoon scientist stereotype. So it just ends up coming across so muddled. Annette in the original seemed fairly realistic given the circumstances she was thrust into, and I feel as if the remake doesn't give that same level of authenticity in the character. It's not shocking to me that Ada's motivation has been changed a lot. The John-Ada connection between the first game will probably not be recognized by 80 to 90% of the people who play this game. Hey, that's fine by me though. So what interesting pursuit did they give her this time? Oh. Ada is more sassy than she was before, which I'll admit I did find entertaining sometimes. Half the time though, her wisecracks aren't really funny or clever. 
sort of like an open mic night comedian. It always manages to do a good job in dispelling any mysterious atmosphere she once had. She doesn't really ever have any dramatic moments or moments where we learn much of anything about her as a person. So it makes the lead up to this moment less interesting, since all we know about Ada in this game is that she is a cold manipulator and likes crack and wise. Another thing is that Ada is further removed from what a realistic spy might be and turned more into a cartoon version of a spy. And someone like Ada as a spy just comes across as someone who is better trained rather than being full of gadgets. I like that it overall involves a lot more ordinary people. It's more interesting to see these people overcoming danger because they have a greater sense of growth from the arduous scenario that they face. So they're a lot more interesting and relatable. It's secret weapon time. Having grounded characters is important. In a setting full of crazy things like horrific zombies and mutants and giant underground labs, you need to have some grounding so that people can take the situation and the threat seriously. James Bond has gadgets because he's a cartoon character and most of his films are just about having a fun time. Resident Evil 2 should have dread and tension. Raccoon City is not the appropriate setting for James Bond or his gadgets. Both her and Annette have been made more basic and reduced down to these stereotypes. There's a bigger reason for why Ada doesn't work here though. Now the main plot point of the original is the G-Virus. The entire purpose of all the non-player characters is to show the effects that the G-Virus has on people. Now I'm not talking literally, like with William Birkin, I'm talking about in a relatable and emotional way. The fact is, you, the player, love the G-Virus. Because of the G-Virus, you get to go on this cool spooky adventure and kill some crazy monsters. So the G-Virus needs to be given some consequences so you will view it in a negative light and give some motivation to you for wanting it destroyed for good. Ada is forced by the powers behind her to infiltrate and get the G-Virus and she hates it. She's so emotionally torn. She actually likes Leon and doesn't want him to get involved with all the trouble in her life. So she's angry at him for staying around. That's why I told you to leave without me, but you wouldn't listen. Now hand it over. Don't make me shoot you. You can't do that. We know Ada doesn't die here, but all the emotionally important stuff remains the same. No! I promised you that we would escape. You just have to help me out here. I... really want to... G-Virus has ruined her life. Sherry is neglected and secluded from her parents because of their research and their strong ties to Umbrella. She loses her father and watches her mother die in front of her. Mom! The G-Virus has ruined her life. Annette's husband is assassinated, her workplace is raided by spies and mercenaries, and she dies realizing she was a shit mother. She is noticeably upset and shaken by these events. I know I've been a terrible mother, but I still love you. Forgive me. The G-Virus has ruined her life. All this drama, all this heartache builds to this moment. No. Sucker. It's satisfying to see Claire and Leon toss that G-Virus, the source of their and others' hardship. You share their triumph. You destroyed something evil. 
together with Claire and Leon. If you take away all the drama setting up this moment, then this action has no emotional impact and becomes essentially meaningless. So what do we get in the remake? Ada is more of a cartoon character and has basically no meaning or purpose on the plot. She exists to give Leon a fetch quest. Annette is more of a cartoon character and is a confused mix of the older Annette character and an entirely new character. So unsurprisingly, she comes across as confused in her scenes. Sherry is pretty much exactly the same and surprise, surprise, her scenes are enjoyable and engaging. I'm not opposed to change at all. Ada can be employed by Hasbro, Annette is secretly a tyrant, and Leon is addicted to meth. That's all fine by me, but you gotta make it interesting. Changing things just for the sake of making them different without even bothering to give it a point is lazy and shit writing. Even things like Mr. X are just made more muddled in the remake. In the original, he's sent to get the G-Virus. Got it. We understand the enemy's motivation and it ties in with the plot. In the remake, he's after witnesses or something? I don't know. The remake absolutely has some parts where it handles the story better. But overall, everything is more muddled and has less of a purpose or impact. Simple, straightforward, motivations, drama, and tension. How hard is that? Sure, the original has good points to its writing, but I'll be honest and say it's an easy game to beat in the writing department. And the remake can't even rise to that. Point original. Okay, let's talk sound. I think it's obvious this one will go to the remake, but in my opinion, it's not an easy victory. A big part of that is the zombies in the remake. They're very unoriginal sounding, and it seems their entire sound repertoire consists of people making aggressive blow sounds. I can do this. The sound of the zombies in the original wasn't perfect, but they were a lot more haunting. It's scary to hear these sad, painful sounds coming from this former human wanting to attack you. The creepiness comes from the disconnect from the action. It doesn't sound exceptionally aggressive, but it wants to execute an aggressive action. It's not normal, it's inhuman. If you want to talk about great zombie sound design, then the Resident Evil remake takes the cake. The zombies in that game make these noises that seem so hard to recreate. It looks like a person, but it makes these totally unheard noises. Again, you have that disconnect. It doesn't sound like a person, so it's creepy. And if you wanted to have a more aggressive sounding enemy, then the crimson heads sound absolutely terrifyingly inhuman. They sound like nothing I've ever heard in my life. Why is it terrifying? It's because of that disconnect. It doesn't sound like a person. I'm getting off track, but my point is that the zombies in the remake sound very unoriginal to my ears. The original had other good points, like how it made good use of mixing in diegetic sound with the music. The sound of some of the weapons were really great too. Leon's upgraded shotgun is possibly one of the best sounding weapons in a video game ever. <laughs> I remember hearing it for the first time and just giggling for the next five minutes. But the remake is a very layered game. You can hear how every area has so many sounds going on. I really love all the weather effects like the rain and the wind and I wish it was used more often in the game. I will give this point to the remake, but it's not an easy win for it in my opinion. It's much more layered, but not significantly more effective than the original. 
Basically, when it comes to the music, the remake comes up short. Why? Well, it's for a couple different reasons. It's subject to the plagues of many modern soundtracks, where it's overly symphonic and sticks to being mostly safe in its approach. Overall, it comes across as a bit generic and not especially memorable. That's not to say it's all like that. I thought a lot of the music in the lab section was great. From the theme of the new ivies to the music that plays over the dramatic moments here and the music that plays during the final escape. But overall, I'm not thinking back to many tracks in the remake. I think a lot of modern soundtracks, be it for movies or video games, suffer from trying to layer too many instruments and sounds in their tracks. Halloween, Suspiria, Phantasm. They have very creepy but memorable soundtracks because they're very unique and they don't try to overcomplicate their sound. I feel like that's something that the original soundtrack can relate to. A great mix of eerie ambient music with this unique implementation of instruments. Not that the original was faultless, there are a couple tracks that are a bit average, but it's a soundtrack that sounds so incomparable to anything else. And it really is key in defining the experience and atmosphere of the game. Another fault of the remake is that it's barely musical at all. I think someone must have told the director of the remake, horror movies and games add too much music and silence is useful for enhancing fear. Now this is a statement I agree with, but they went overboard with how silent this game is. Referencing those horror movies again, part of the reason they're spooky is how they utilize their music. I downloaded the original soundtrack DLC for the remake and it just does wonders to enhance certain places. The original soundtrack really helped define and create atmosphere for the place you were in, and it works no different when you hear it in the remake. You develop a sonic association with the location as well as a visual one. It makes the location memorable. Going back to the remake soundtrack can make locations feel empty, like they're missing something. After you become familiar with places, they can lose their eeriness, but with an accompanying score, it can stay haunting every time you pass through. Point original. Now, if you follow my channel, you know I like to talk about voice actors. I was really intrigued and excited to see what kind of new voice talent they would bring to replace the originals. The original was good, but definitely not flawless. I've made a lot of my comments on the original voice actors in my review of the original game. So let's look at the voice actors in the remake. Nick Apostolides. 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 Voices Leon Kennedy. I think that's a Greek name and it's a little tricky for me to pronounce. So I'll give him a nickname instead. How about Captain Charisma? Why Captain Charisma? It's on you now. Just go. I understand. I won't let you down, Marvin. As you might tell by my sarcastic title for him, I don't think he does a good job. In fact, I think he's so awful and drains the life out of any scene he's in. He is just so monotone and he's completely unfazed by everything that happens. He's just so unnatural. Everyone talks about how Devil May Cry 2 is bad and have shown how it plays like shit. But the other big reason Devil May Cry 2 is shit is that Dante throughout the game acts like he took a few sedatives before every scene or that his diesel jeans are too tight. And he is so unengaging that you just lose interest. Did you find what you were looking for? Yes. Now we can stop Arius's ambition. Whatever. That's how Leon felt to me in this game. Like Devil May Cry 2 Dante. You can have bad games that play like complete shit with the most odd dialogue, but if you have an actor that actually puts a lot of effort into their performance, you really begin to enjoy the character, which makes you enjoy the game itself. I know I'm coming across as harsh, but Captain Charisma was just so unengaging that I just did not give a damn about Leon. I called Paul Haddad's performance as Leon a bit flat, but he has tenfold the charm and engagement that Captain Charisma has. Just going back and looking at Leon's scenes in the original, it was like I was watching a completely different character. A character who actually reacts to things and has this crazy thing called emotions. Sally Cahill's Ada was so great. The only thing holding her performance back was some of the clumsy dialogue written for her. In Resident Evil 4, where she was given some good dialogue that had subtext and such, she really proved what a talented performer she could be. Leon. Long time no see. So great that all voice actors that voiced Ada after her pretty much copied her performance. Sally Cahill is Ada Wong. So that's a tough act for our new Ada, Jolene Anderson, to follow. 
Do I think Jolene Anderson is a bad voice actor? No. I think there's enough in this game to show that she is a good performer. Is she a good Ada Wong though? I would say no. That's not Jolene Anderson's fault though. She comes across to me as someone who is miscast as Ada. Ada should really have a very womanly voice and Jolene Anderson doesn't really bring that to Ada, I feel. Perhaps if Ada's character was given something to do, then maybe Jolene Anderson would have had a better opportunity to give more of a performance. So overall, not bad, but miscast and subject to the ills of the script. Stephanie Panicello does a really good job with Claire. She gives a lot of personality to Claire when possible, and the way she interacts with Sherry feels very natural. A lot of the dialogue for Claire is quite clumsy and unnatural, but Stephanie Panicello does a good job to mask it. All the charm and engagement of Claire comes purely from her performance, and she makes the best with what she has. When it comes to Stephanie Panicello versus Alison Court, I don't think I can say. Neither are totally perfect and both are subject to the clumsy dialogue. All I will say is that if Claire Redfield makes another appearance in a new Resident Evil game, I would be glad if Stephanie Panicello reprised her role. Eliza Pryor does a great job as Sherry. Lisa Yamanaka also did a good job with Sherry, I feel, and while she was still just a young teen when she voiced Sherry, it's hard to win against the authenticity of an actor who is much closer to the same age as the character, like Eliza Pryor is. Christopher Michael Watson is a great Marvin. I wish Marvin was in the game more because I'd like to see some more of his performance. At first, I thought he was a bit stiff and awkward in his scenes with Leon, but later when I saw his interactions with Claire, I could see that he was quite natural and engaging. Since Christopher Michael Watson had a better actor to play off is probably the reason why I enjoyed his performance more in the Claire scenes. Sid Carton is not a good Chief Irons. His voice is very unintimidating and uninteresting. Going around screaming bitch and that whiny high pitched voice of his, it's just unoriginal and wrong. Gary Crawford really demonstrates just how unstable Chief Irons really is with his unsettling performance. He's one of the big reasons that Chief Irons is so memorable. Karen Strassman plays Annette here in the remake. Now Karen Strassman is a good voice actor and a true voice acting veteran. I also think she's a really good choice to play Annette, but because of how confusingly the character is written, Karen Strassman's performance takes a hit and she can't properly commit to the right performance for Annette. A good voice actor can't save a mishandled character. Jennifer Dale had the luck of voicing a character that was more consistent. So voice acting in the original and remake, which is better? This is a little tough because I really appreciate the good performers in the new game and how they handled these characters. But when you listen to the original, just about every actor fits their character really well, or at least puts a lot of effort into their performance. There's no major performance that's dragging anyone else down, and they're all as engaging as they possibly could be considering the dialogue that they're given. You know what I'm getting at. I'm gonna say that the original game is better for voice acting. Maybe some of you might think that how could a PS1 game have better voice acting than a modern game? Everything about old video games, just like old movies, doesn't fall obsolete. Maybe the technology of the cameras or the lights is old, but all the creative stuff is forever. Many things have been improved since PS1 times and, and actors are given more freedom and proper writers are hired into game development so actors have more opportunity to demonstrate a good performance. That much is true, but the Resident Evil 2 remake is not one of those games that demonstrates that change. Point original. And there we have it. If we look at the score, we can see a tie. Both games have five points each. I think that's a fairly apt way to conclude this video in the end. Both of these games are very good, and if I didn't feel that way, then I wouldn't have spent all the time I did making this video. If you really want to know how I personally feel, without the regard for lists or a vague sense of objectivity, then I will say that the original remains the favourite in my heart. I just love its design, direction, music and characters, and I think it would take something inhumanly extraordinary to replace the passion I feel for that game. But don't get me wrong. I really like the remake a lot. Frankly, I can't wait to be done with this video and get my S plus rank. But more importantly, I'm really glad the remake exists and is as popular as it is. This is a proper horror game with a lot of depth or mechanics, manual saving and distinct gameplay. Capcom has been chasing trends made by other games all this time and it's led them down some questionable paths. But with this game, they made something that feels true to the roots of Resident Evil and now they're setting the trends instead of following them. 
just as they should be. A big part of why this game even exists is thanks to you guys, the fans. You kept talking and dreaming of this game and it came to be. You moved a gigantic game company with your passion. So despite whatever gripes I have in the end, I see the bigger picture. I see that this is a game with significance beyond just being a simple entertaining experience. I see the powers of what fans can do and how that old school touch hasn't been lost. I see a great game. Oh, 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 oh,